What's up, everyone? Welcome to Mana Kids Online Family Experience. God has something great in store for you, your family, and we're thankful that you get to experience it together. So keep watching and learning. I'm Jayla, and I just learned the most fun game from my friend. It's called Red Light, Green Light. When you see the green light, you move as fast as you can, like this. Green light! But when you see the red light, you have to stop and wait super fast, like this. Red light! Do you want to play this game with me by clapping? When I show you the green light, clap your hands. But when I show you the red light, stop. Green light! Red light! Green light, red light. Great job. That was so much fun. Who? Who? It's Ollie. Hello, Jayla. Who? Who? Starting and stopping, are you? 
Oh, hi, Ollie. Yes, I've been playing Red Light, Green Light. It's a really fun game. It's good to be ready to move. Who? Who? I know someone else who made a big move, too. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through who? Ollie's got a Bible story for me and you. Oh, hi, friends. It's so good to see you on this beautiful day. I'm Justin the Mailman. I deliver mail to so many houses, and to get to each house, I follow a map. See, this map helps me go here, there, and everywhere. That reminds me. Today, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. And when I tell you about Jesus, I think you're going to want to follow him here, there, and everywhere. Can you try that with me? Here, there, and everywhere. Great job. Now, let me put the story mail in the mailbox. Now, on the count of three, say, ready, set, move, okay? One, two, three, ready, set, move. So our true story from the Bible begins with a man named Paul. Paul was not a friend of Jesus or anyone who was friends with Jesus. Paul would look for Jesus' friends and take them to jail. Oh no, that's not a good friend. But one day, that all changed. Paul was walking down a road to a city called Damascus. And all of a sudden, there was a bright light. Everyone say, that's so bright. That's so bright. Paul fell to his knees. Then he heard a voice ask, Paul, why don't you want to be my friend? Paul didn't know who was talking to him, so he asked, who are you? And who do you think it was? It was Jesus. Jesus was talking to Paul. Everyone say, wow, wow. Jesus told Paul to go into the city and wait to be told what to do. When Paul stood up and opened his eyes, he couldn't see anything. The people with him had to help Paul go to the city. When Paul got there, he waited to see what Jesus wanted him to do. When Paul met Jesus, Paul's life changed forever because now Paul knew that Jesus is alive. And we know that Jesus is alive too, and that Jesus wants to be our friend forever. Oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who wants to be your friend forever? Jesus wants to be my friend forever. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who wants to be your friend forever? Jesus wants to be my friend forever. That's the truth, friends. See you next time. So there's your story, and it's all true. Paul met Jesus and wanted to follow him too. Thanks, Sally. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow, Paul saw a bright light and it made him stop and he heard Jesus talk to him. Jesus changed Paul's life forever. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good. I know if I stop or if I go. Jesus wants to be my friend forever. See you next time. Jesus said, come, follow me. Matthew 4, 19. Jesus said, come, follow me. Matthew 4, 19.
If you stepped outside right now, what would you see? Maybe you'd see high blue sky overhead filled with towering white clouds. Maybe you'd see crowds of people, each with their own unique look and flair. Maybe you'd see leafy trees with colorful birds swooping through their branches. Maybe you'd see tall, intricately designed buildings or vast mountains. From the rough mosaic bark on a tree to the fine lines of blood vessels just beneath your skin, every bit of it is God's handiwork or the work of people God created and inspired. Paul writes in his letter to the church in Rome, Ever since the world was created, it has been possible to see the qualities of God that are not seen. As you look at the world around you, it's impossible not to see the fingerprints of God, to see God's power, imagination, and faithfulness. Seeing what God has created and hearing stories about the wonderful things God has done can lead us to trust God more and more. And when you trust God, you're ready to make a move. As you begin to rely on God to help you face your challenges each day, others can see God at work. That's why faith is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud, it's all about living loud. From the start, you're the one who knows my heart. You are there for me, Jesus. You are showing me the way, love and kindness every day. You are helping me, Jesus. So I'll find. Hey everybody, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about faith while we take a look at the story of someone who had to lose his sight to see. Hey, I got your glasses. Oh, thanks, man. You're very welcome. You have a great trip. Thank you.
Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about faith. Which is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Are you ready to move? Well, I want to see what's in the box. Me too. You mean you don't know? Not a clue. Wait. What? Mysterious box? No label? It's a scary movie waiting to happen. You're right. Let's take precautions. OK, you ready? On the count of 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Zeke, 11. Hmm? Nothing. Oh, wait. There's a flashlight. And not a very good one. Hold on. This isn't just any flashlight. <laughs> it's a black light. Like what they use at crime scenes? Oh, it can be used for lots of stuff. Well, how does it work? A black light gives off ultraviolet light that is invisible to humans. Certain fluorescent substances absorb the ultraviolet light and re-emit it at a different wavelength, making the light visible and the material appear to glow. Cool. I wonder what we can see with this. You're wearing a white shirt. Watch this. Lights. Wow. Whoa. Dude, look at your shirt. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, your teeth looks ridiculous. Uh, it's like I'm radioactive. What else can we see? Whoa, glowing fruit. That is totally awesome. Ripe bananas get fluorescent so that they can attract animals like fruit bats that don't see the normal range of light. Ah, God must have a wild imagination to come up with that. Hey, there's a note in there. It's blank. You really think so? Ah, lights! Find six letters around the lab and you will get a prize that's fab. So we're supposed to search the whole lab with the black light? Sounds like it. Well, what are we looking for? Not sure. Let's start over here. Falling right behind you. I see you. Just make sure you have my back. Oh, look. Oh, it's a P. Wow. Let's keep going. OK. Oh, it's a three. But that's a number. I think it counts, right? As numbers do. Let's keep going. OK, so we have a P and a three. Oh, look, look, look. Oh, an L. The plot thickens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we got to find some more. Ooh, right behind you. We got to find some more, Zeke. Oh, look, 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 look. X marks the spot, huh? Oh, matey. <laughs> OK, so we've got three. P. L. X. OK, two more. Right, that's four. I'm kind of scared, Zeke. Don't be, I'm right here. Oh, oh, oh. Here's oh. an A. Oh, scared me. OK. OK, one more. One more. What have we got so far? Uh, uh, three, P, L, X, X A. A. One more. One more. Where is it? You find it. No, 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 no. I couldn't, I couldn't. You, you haven't found one yet. Oh, OK. Is it on the ground? No, no, no. Is it on the ceiling? No. Ooh, you're moving too fast. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Where are you? Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, oh. Let's see. Okay, okay, so that's that's uh that's six. Right. What do we got? We're done, we're done. Okay. Uh, three. Uh, uh P. L. Uh A. X. Uh C. That's all of them. Th three. I, I said that. We're done. We're done. Finally! Uh, lights! Okay, that was six. What have we got? Uh P3 L exact. What if we rearrange the letters? Nope. Nope. Oh, C-3PO. You know. Sir, the possibility of us successfully navigating the asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1. There's no O. <sighs> wait, wait, let's see what it looks like with the 3 and the X put together. Wait, I got it. Oh, God, I clapped three times. So we're supposed to clap three times? You can do the honors.
Ooh, a gift. What could be inside? I have no idea. You, you, uh, open it. No, you open it. Uh, no, you open it. No, I won't open no, it. I, me neither. No, you. OK. You ready? Yes. Ooh, glow sticks. I know just what to do with these. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, let's stop. I'm tired. Yeah, me too. Oh, that was a blast. I feel like I've gotten to see the whole world in a new light today. And we're just getting started. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly with the help of God's Spirit. When the believers faced trouble in Jerusalem, they scattered to other places, taking the news of Jesus everywhere they went. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Today, I want to introduce you to a man named Saul. Now, if there was such a thing as a model Pharisee or Jewish religious leader, Saul was it. Saul, also known as Paul, was born as a Roman citizen which gave him special privileges. Growing up, he studied the scriptures until he knew them inside and out. As the early church grew, Saul was just as upset as the other religious leaders. When a Jesus follower named Stephen was sentenced to die, Saul stood by in approval and actually held the coats of the men who threw stones at Stephen. Saul was absolutely certain that Jesus' followers were a threat and that the best way to please God was to get rid of them. He began going house to house, dragging believers off to prison. And when the new believers scattered to other towns, Saul wanted to follow. He took his plan to the high priest. Give me letters to the synagogue in Damascus. Then I can go and hunt down men and women who belong to the way of Jesus. We'll arrest them and bring them back here to Jerusalem. Fantastic idea. Consider it done. With the approval of the high priest, Saul gathered a group of men and supplies for the journey. Now, Damascus, which was the capital of Syria, is around 150 miles from Jerusalem, so that would have taken nearly two weeks to travel on foot. But Saul hated the followers of Jesus so much that he couldn't wait to get on with it. After long days of travel, Saul's group finally neared the city of Damascus. The noonday sun shone down bright and hot, but Saul charged ahead, eager to carry out his plan. We'll find them all. We'll stamp out this dangerous Jesus nonsense. Then, something happened. Something that would change Saul's life in an instant. A brilliant light flared from heaven. So bright the sun seemed dim. A voice spoke from the light. Saul, Saul. Why are you opposing me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. I'm the one you are opposing. Okay, now imagine for a moment that you're Saul. You thought Jesus was just a troublemaker who was killed, dead and gone. Yet now he's alive, speaking to you from a blaze of light. It's like your whole world tips upside down in an instant. Ah! Huh. <laughs> And Jesus wasn't done yet with what he had to say to Saul. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul saw the light too and heard a sound. What is that? It's like thunder. As the light faded, Saul stood and opened his eyes. I, I can't see. Saul had been in full command, yet now he was helpless. Men from the group led him to a home in Damascus, and for three days, still blind, Saul prayed to God. During this time, he didn't even eat or drink anything. And that's where we'll leave it for today. The end. 
Ooh, a cliffhanger. <laughs> You're right, it's to be continued. You cannot just leave everyone hanging like this. <sighs> okay, spoiler alert, Saul's meeting with Jesus did change him. Later, Saul regained his sight, and instead of trying to wipe out Jesus' followers, Saul became one. So what's our part in the story? Well, you probably won't hear Jesus ever speak to you from a brilliant light. Saul's perspective, his way of seeing the world, was changed in an instant. But as you begin to learn who Jesus is and choose to follow him, your vision too will start to shift. You'll start to see things in a new light. Like the stuff that happens to you. That's true. When you know Jesus, you discover that you are a child of God and that God loves you more than you can imagine. Everything that happens to you, even the hard stuff, becomes an opportunity to grow and become more like Jesus. Knowing Jesus can change how you see other people too. Yeah, it's like you get this supervision to look at your class bully or your annoying little cousin and see that they're made in God's image too. And they deserve your love and respect. Knowing Jesus means that you can pause at any moment in your day and ask Jesus to give you his perspective. The more you do, the more Jesus will show you ways to love God and love people in everything you do. Yep, I think you guys are seeing the light. See you next time. So here's the thing. Knowing Jesus changes how you see things. Hey, do you think those glow sticks have any light left? And thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Yep, you got it. How was the trip? Not a lot of leg room. Oh, but at least I had dinner. Can you hand me that drink? Yeah, I didn't pack that. I'm so sorry I'm late, John. I am having the worst day. Oh, great. Oh, we started already. Hi, everybody. I'm Brandon, and uh, this is The So-and-So Show. Uh, normally, I'm joined by my co-host, John, but today, it's, I guess it's just me until we, oh, here he is. Wow. That's incredible. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs>
There's my guy. Yeah, how you right. doing, okay. dude? Well, uh, actually, uh, thanks for that, but actually I'm in a pretty bad mood. So. Oh, what's wrong? Well, you know, the weather outside is just awful today. I, the, the top fell off of my lunch and I spilled half of it. And I cut my fingernails too close, so now my cuticles hurt. Oh, wow. so you, uh, ow! Oh, why, why I'm sorry, you... I'm sorry, pal. I, you know what, though? I've got something that can make everything better today. Okay. Do you remember a few years back when I made those rose-colored glasses? Yeah, yeah. Didn't those get you in a lot of trouble? Uh, uh, flashback. Ow. Let's have slash! <laughs> oh. John loses! Oh! Oh! That was then. I made a few adjustments. What kind of adjustments? Yeah, they're better now. Everything's better when you look through rose-colored glasses. Give it a try. I fail to see how a pair of glasses is going to make my day any better, but... Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, right? Oh, yummy. Mmm. Is that my hand? Uh, yeah. You enjoying it? Yeah. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Everything is so positive. Yeah, the adjustments work, right? Yeah. Cool. Ah! Whoa! What is it? Nothing. Your head is... So super handsome? Yeah. Sure. Look, I gotta be honest, I'm not sure I can take this level of relentless positivity, so... Oh, well, that's okay. Here, I can take back. Actually, you know what? Let me, just a second, let me get started on my lunch first. Oh. Yeah, that's a good idea. And while you fill your belly, let's fill our minds! It's Bible Story Time with Kellen! Hey, fellas! Enjoying your lunch there, Brandon? Yeah, sorry, Kellen. I just want to get finished before I give John these glasses back. What? Uh, it would really avoid a lot of confusion if you would watch the show before your segment, Kellen. I usually do but sometimes I like the confusion. That's fair. Uh, what, what, are we, what are we talking about today, Kellen? Well, we're gonna be looking at the day the Apostle Paul became a follower of Jesus. You may or may not know, but Paul is a giant figure in the Bible. Ah! And I am a giant figure too! Look, it's Horvath standing up to Kellen's! Hey, Horvath! Hi, Kellen's! Hi! My, my figure is giant! Not so tall, but very much wide. Ah. Horvath sometimes assists with the Bible story by doing exercises that help us remember it. That's right! Let's do this! All right. Okay, so Saul was on the road to Damascus. Wait! What? Who is Saul? I thought, I thought you were telling the story of Opossum Paul. <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, yes, yes. The Apostle Paul is who we're talking about, but he had a couple of different names. Some places he was called Paul, and other places he was called Saul. So Paul and Saul are the same peoples? That's right. I understand. Are you sure? First exercise! Okay, the Saul-Paul shuffle. First, you spread your legs, and then your arms apart, like this. Then you shuffle this way. I'm Saul! Then you do a 375 degree turn. Then you shuffle back. Oh. I'm Paul. We do this 373 five times degrees. Wait, what? Go! Okay. One. <laughs> Four. Juice Newton. 375 degrees. All right, what did Paul Saul do next? Uh, well, let's just go with Saul today. Let's do this, okay. Saul! Okay. Before he met Jesus, Saul was actually a pretty scary guy. He would seek out followers of Jesus and have them thrown in jail. That's bad. Yes, it was. You see, Saul didn't believe Jesus was who he said he was. Huh? So, one day, Saul and some of his friends set out on the road to Damascus where they were hoping to find Jesus' followers to arrest. Ah! 
Second exercise! The Damascus 5K in place, half marathon, fun run! That's not fun! We run in place for 5K miles! Go! One, 17, goose down pillow, Austin Pfeffer Incorporated. That's not a word. Blue no. Five miles, Kay! Where are we? Are we in Damascus yet, Kellens? Uh, are we? No, we, we are not. Oh. But Saul, at this point, Saul and his friends were traveling on the road to Damascus when suddenly a huge light from heaven flashed around Saul. Oh! I know what that is! He's doing the final pose down at the Mr. Galacticon Muscle Expo! Not exactly like that. Oh. It was probably more like this. Ah! Kellen, where are you? Ah, I'm scared! Yeah, that's probably how Saul was feeling. Ah! So, you okay? Ah, I can't see. Oh, no. Well, at that point, Saul fell to the ground. Then he heard a voice come from everywhere that said, Huh? Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? The voice is coming from the cans! I'm scared! Horvath, it's just, it's, it's just a special effect. Uh, okay, I want me to hear some. Hello. Oh! Next exercise! I call this the light, bright face pinch! Come in real close. Closer. Closer. First, you start with your face, and like a light, bright is shining on your face, and you squint your eyes like this. And then, after that, you, the light goes away, and you can finally see it, and you go like this. Ah, we'll do this 148,627 times! Ready? Goes! It. One! Ah, two! Ah, five! Ah, five. Ah, 148,000 and the other half of the number, I can't remember! Ah, all right, what happened next, Kellens? Well, when Saul heard the voice say, Why are you opposing me? He replied, who are you, Lord? It was Jesus. Right. The voice said, I am Jesus. I am the one you are opposing. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. Whoa! After that, Saul got up and opened his eyes, but he couldn't see a thing. Not even his shoes? Nothing. Whoa! His friends had to lead him into the city of Damascus. Saul couldn't see. For three days, he didn't eat or drink anything. What happened next? What happened next? Did he eat on the four days? At least some sandwiches or a hot pocket? Well, oh, that's good. But actually, we'll talk about what else happened to Saul next time. Oh, no! A cliffhanger! I love it! Next exercise! The cliffhanger! It's a great way to build up your seps! Ah, I'm clapping gangs. Ah. Okay. Spoiler alert. Saul, who was also called Paul, ends up being one of the good guys. After he met Jesus, it changed how he saw everything. His faith was so great. He would go on to write a lot of what we call the New Testament. That's the thing about knowing Jesus. He can help you see things in a whole new way. Help me! Ah! Um, you're, you're not really... Oh, no! There's I'm sleeping! There's, there's nothing... Oh, you okay. cut off the cliff! Oh! <laughs> you know what? I'll see you guys next time with more of Paul's story. Oh, I'm still falling! Oh, he's really going down. Oh! All right, Brandon, can I have my glasses back? Sure. Actually, you know, I don't... I don't think I need them after that. Kellen is right. You, you, you don't need rose-colored glasses. Having faith in Jesus can help you see things differently. Like, even when it seems like everything's going wrong, you can have faith that God's got a better plan. So when you really know Jesus and put your faith in him, it can help you see more clearly. You said it, Balloonhead. <laughs> Balloonhead. Yeah, don't worry about it. Reveal the question. Today's question is, what do you know about Jesus? Well, we know he had long hair and a beard and held his hands out like this a lot. 
you know, from the paintings I saw. Yeah, actually, we don't know what Jesus looked like, but we do know that he loves people. Oh, he can do miracles. Yeah, he's the son of God. Absolutely. Hey, talk about it together. What do you know about Jesus? Yep. So, do you think your perspective has changed? You know, are you seeing things differently? Absolutely. You know, just because my day started off bad doesn't mean it has to end that way. Ah. Who needs rose-colored glasses, right? Uh, but, but I made those. And for that, I'm grateful. Until next week, I'm Brandon. And my glasses are broken. And this was the so-and-so show. See, and I broke them? Yeah, you oh, did. I'm sorry. Well, it's probably right. when I threw them. Yeah, yeah, gravity and, and airspeed usually don't mix well. First pose, classic pose. I call this one uh, uh, confused which cereal to get at the grocery store. Waved at somebody you thought you knew, but it turned out to be somebody you do. No. Hey, yo. Uh, hey, yo. Facing the wrong direction of the cameras. This, I can do this one. Yeah, this is easy. Where am I? Where am I? This next pose is called knee. <laughs> A clothing uh, model in old Sears catalogs. And what is sin? Correct! Sin is anything we think, say, or do that makes God sad, and it separates us from Him. God didn't want to stay separated from us, though. That's why Jesus died on the cross. If you have never asked Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, you're going to have the opportunity right now. Just bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. I put my faith in you. I put my trust in you. And I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Congratulations. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, we know there's a party going on in heaven. And now it's time for small groups. In the links below, we have some amazing resources, including Manikid's Facebook group and Instagram that will allow you and your family to learn more about God together all week long. Okay, I'll see you next week.